Okay, so today this is objective 1.3a, and it probably in your footer of your note page, it says 1.2a. Could you change that to a 1.3a? Solving linear equations in seven steps. Okay, let me just preface today's lesson by telling you that I know you know how to solve linear equations. This lesson is all about using the proper terminology and learning the different learning the names of the different types of linear equations that you will be presented with today there are three types so here's our instructional objective i will be able to solve conditional identity and contradictory, uh, we'll call them contradiction, contradiction, equations. No, not equations, linear equations. Be specific, because you don't want quadratics in here. Linear equations. And even more specifically, not the kind that you graph. Not that kind of linear equation. Linear equations in one variable. I will be able to solve conditional, identity, and contradiction linear equations in one variable. So I'm going to ask a question real quick. Does any do any of those equations, types of equations, sound familiar? Yes? Which ones? Does the conditional equation sound familiar? How about the identity? I'm thinking if you've heard of anybody, any of them, you've heard of the identity. Well, we're going to talk about what they are. First, let's define what a linear equation in one variable is. A linear equation in one variable is a first degree a first degree Do you know what that means? Vocabulary again, right? Just load, yeah. First degree, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> okay. First degree means that um, the largest exponent is one. Well, that's not a one. Probably I should back that up and actually make one. So first degree equation <clears throat> with one variable That can be written in the form AX plus B equals zero. <clears throat> Where a and B are real and A cannot equal zero. Actually, I should probably say that they're real numbers. A and B are real numbers. They're numbers. So the only variable in that equation really is the X. Because A and B represent real numbers. And A can't be zero. Why is that? What will happen if A is zero to my equation? What happens to the X? It's not there anymore. So it's not an equation in one variable because it the zero for A would eliminate the variable. Okay? 
So that is a linear equation in one variable. Now, if it's a first degree equation, typically it's going to have one solution because it's a degree of one. It'll have one solution, but not always. Have you ever solved a quadratic equation before? You know you have. Quadratic equations, a degree of two equation because the largest exponent is a two. So a quadratic equation can have up to two solutions. If it's a cubic equation, it can have up to three solutions. If it's a quartic equation, it can have up to four, etc. So since this is a degree of one or a first degree equation, it can have one solution. But that's not the only type of solution that it can have. So now we're going to talk about the different types of equations and the types of solutions that you can get. The first one is the conditional equation. And what is a conditional equation? Here it is. It's an equation with a finite, finite. The opposite of infinite is finite. And yes, you say it finite, not finite. A finite solution. That means you can actually count how many solutions it has. It has a finite amount of solutions. For example, x plus 1, keeping it basic, equals 3. This is what we would call a conditional equation because how many solutions will make that a true statement? What does x have to, what's the condition for x? What's the condition for x? It has to be 2. If x is anything else, it won't equal 3. So the condition is, for this equation, the condition is if the solution is 2, this is a true equation, an actual equation. So. Um, we would write this solution in a solution set, x equals 2. We won't write it x equals 2. We're going to write the solution set of 2. See how many solutions it has? 1. And this makes it conditional on the condition that x equals 2. Right? Has your mom ever said to you, you can go out on this condition, you have to clean your room, right? So you have to have that meet the condition before you can do what you want to do. Okay, so that's conditional. The next one is the identity equation. What is an identity? So that was the first part, a conditional, had one solution. What do you think an identity is? Actually... This is an equation with a finite solution, and identity is an equation with infinite solutions. Infinite solutions. Because this has a single solution, or I can count how many solutions it has. This one has one. Let me give you an example. Maybe it'll make sense. What if I said this? So here's an example of an identity equation. 3x plus 9 equals 3 times the quantity of x plus 3. This is an identity solution. Because can you see that they're identical on both sides? I think you can probably imagine, right? If you distribute. So I want you to just pick, let's keep it little so that we can do math in our head. Any value you want for x, keep it little. One. Okay. So three times one is plus nine is. Okay. I'm going to put a one over here. One plus three is four and four times three is 12. And you just randomly picked one. Pick another one. Zero. Zero. Okay. Three times zero is plus nine is. Okay, 0 plus 3 is? Three. And 3 times 3 is? 9. 9. All of the numbers, all of the numbers on the number line are true for this statement. So my solution, because these are identical equations, my solution is 
all real numbers. Now that's the symbol for the set of real numbers. So that's what I've said right there, the set of real numbers, meaning any number in the universe that's real will work as a solution. We call this an identity. You can put fractions in there, you can put pi in there, it won't matter. Another thing to remember is they're identical left and right. This is Mrs. Herm. Next, last but not least, we have the contradiction. The contradiction, so we have an equation that has finite solutions, an equation that has infinite solutions. What's left? No I like it. Using logic. An equation with no solution. And folks, sometimes this happens. An equation with no solution. For example, let's say I had the equation x is equal to x plus 1. How would that work? Because if x is 5, on this side it's 6 on that side, and 5 does not equal 6. So this is not a true statement. So when we have a contradiction and we want to identify the solution, we call that an empty set. That is an empty set. Or we would call this a no solution. An empty set or no solution. I typically like for you to write your solutions in solution sets. So I'd like you to use the little braces. Your college professors are going to want to see that most of the time too. So I'm just training you up. Let me just make this clear. If you do this, I'm going to write this. Don't do this. When you put the no solution inside the solution set, it's not empty anymore because you put something in it. It's not an empty set. So don't combine the answers. There are two different versions of the answer. This is an empty set. That's a no solution. They say the same thing, okay? They mean the same thing, but you don't combine them, okay? So we call these solution sets. Conditional, identity, contradiction. So there's a the vocabulary. Ready to move on? Yes. Okay, so now we're getting down to um, the steps for solving an equation. And again, I know you already know how to solve the equation, but I want you to start using the proper terminology. So our goal for 1.3 is to isolate the variable, of course. Okay, come here with those hiccups. We're going to get rid of them right now. So step one. Step one is to clear the fraction. And you won't see a lot of fractions in today's assignment, but we are going to talk about that a little bit today and then tomorrow and Friday a lot. So to clear the fraction, basically I want to use the lowest common denominator, least common denominator if you prefer. So that's step one. Step two, distributive property. Which means what? Yeah, get rid of the parentheses. Use the distributive property. Step three. Combine like terms. Right now, separately, left side combine. So we're going to um, actually let me do this. I did those the wrong way. So what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze in the left side and the right side. So we're going to combine like terms on each side separately, squeeze them in, make them simple. 
And then step four and five, I'm actually going to do together because they're basically the same step. So I'm going to write here in the middle that the next thing we're going to use is the additive, additive inverse, additive inverse. <clears throat> and that should kind of be in between the four and five. And then up here in step four, where it says step four, additive inverse, um, we want variable terms. On one side. And then for step five, constant terms. I don't think I want to write the word terms because I'm writing right underneath the word terms. So I'm going to just use a ditto mark. Other side. So when you see me do that, I'm just telling you, copy the word above. That's what that is. It's called the ditto mark. Note taking skills here. Ditto. What's additive inverse? I'm using terminology. You said distributed properties, you know, distribute. Get rid of the parentheses. So what's additive inverse? Pretty much what you do is add or subtract. It's the same number both sides. Right. And you use the inverse, right? If it says add 5 to move it to the other side, you would subtract, subtract five, 5 on both sides. On both sides, right? So that's additive inverse. Use the additive inverse. Step 6 is multiplicative inverse. And this is the step where you move, where you either multiply or you divide by the lead coefficient to isolate the variable. So this is to isolate the variable. So if it says 2 times x, you'll do the inverse of that, divide by 2, both sides. Step 7. Check solution and identify. Is it conditional? Identity or contradiction? And you can abbreviate on your assignment. You don't have to write the whole words out. Just make sure that when you do conditional and contradiction that there's enough letters in your abbreviation for me to tell. If you do C-O-N, I don't know which one you're talking about, right? So C-O-N-D, okay, conditional. C-O-N-T, okay, contradiction. Okay, so all kinds of vocabulary going on there. Do you have a question? Yes. Speak up. Yeah, you solve it, and then you can determine. Absolutely. Okay. All right, so here we go. I am going to change problem number one slightly. So let's go do a couple practices. Not that I think you need that much practice solving these basic equations, but I would like to change number one to say 3 times the quantity of x plus 2 all over 2 equals... 5x plus 2. Not over anything. So, just add that. So now we're going to follow the step. Step 1, we have a fraction. Let's clear it by using the least common denominator, which is... What's the least common denominator, people? Only have 1. It's 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation times 2. 
And the reason that I'm doing this is because I can use a little shortcut here. I can cancel the two out here because this is really a two over one. So I can cross simplify and get rid of the fraction. It's gone. Okay, and I like to be remove it from the situation if I can. Now I'm going to distribute. Yes, right? So 3x plus 6 equals, and we're going to distribute, step 2, on this side, 10x plus 4. Mm, step 3, combining like terms on the left, those aren't like. Those aren't like. So now we're going to use our additive inverse. So I'm going to move the 10x to the left. You might move the 3x to the right. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to move the 10x. So when I additive inverse, it says positive 10x or plus 10x. So I'm going to subtract 10x. That's the inverse. And at the same time, I'm bringing my x's left. I'm going to take my constant to the right. So additive inverse of plus 6 minus 6, which you are well aware of. So we get negative 7x equals negative 2. And then multiplicative inverse. Divide by negative 7. We get x equals 2 sevenths. If I give you a fraction in the problem, you give me a fraction in the answer. Solution is 2 sevenths. And this baby is conditional. And if I wanted you to check that, you could plug it in. But that's correct. We're going to move on to number not two, but three. I don't know how that happened. It looks like number two might have just been erased or something. So here we have three times the quantity of x plus five equals three times the quantity of one plus x. Now there's a number of ways we could do this. Some people might think, well, I could just divide both sides by three right? But we're going to go ahead and use a distributed property, which says that we are going to get 3x plus 15 equals 3 plus 3x. And we're actually going to finish this problem out. So again, with additive inverse, I'm going to move my 3x to the left and my 15 to the right. Cancel that guy out. Subtract my 15. Cancel that guy out, and I get 0 equals negative 12. You might get 12 equals 0 because you went the other way. This is false, right? This is an empty set. There is no solution. It's a contradiction. 0 contradicts negative 12. They're not the same. So that's contradiction. And I think probably here you probably could have seen it, right? How is it possible for 3x plus 15 to be the same as 3x plus 3? This one's 12 bigger, right? Isn't the left side 12 bigger than the right side? It's weird. Okay, last one, number 3. You have. Now this one's got a part of the problem that might mess with a couple people. And this is an identity because I want you to have one example of each one in here. But I want you to be really careful. Those of you that are being in a hurry and think that you're supposed to add five plus five first, you have to distribute first. Don't want you distributing a 10 because that's not the order of operations. So it's five plus five X plus 10 minus 2x equals 3x plus 15. Now this time, we're going to squeeze in our left side because we can combine like terms on the left, right? Right? 3x plus 15. 5x minus 2x, and there we get it. So we get 3x plus 15 equals 3x 15. So you might see that and go, well, those are identical, right? So this is an identity, but I'll go ahead and finish solving it. I'm going to move the 3x using my additive inverse to the left. Now I'm going to take my 15 using additive inverse 
to the right. And I get 0 equals 0. And the x has disappeared. But that's a true statement. So when I get that, my solution set is all real numbers. That's the symbol for real numbers. And this is an identity. So you have an example of each one. We've reviewed the steps to solving an equation, which you probably didn't need that part. Here's my expectation for your homework in regards to your notes. In regards to your notes. In your reflection, I would like to see the use of the vocabulary terms we discussed. And highlight that you're using them. Get your highlighter out and highlight every vocabulary term that you use in your reflection. Because if we want you to actually practice writing them and reading them and saying them and thinking in those terms. Because the more you do it, the more you'll use it in everyday conversation with me. Okay? And you are going to be doing on the assignment that you were picked up today, problems 13, 17 through 38. Please read the instructions. Set up your homework in the correct format. Okay?